Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing well. Um, as you know, we've been talking about visual rhetoric and how the visual in image can carry meaning or be symbolic of, of other things. And so we're gonna continue with that idea today. Now, we've talked a little bit how symbolism and visuals can be used in for advertising um, to promote or um, suggest meaning to an audience. And the ads that I showed you were relatively gauged towards an older-ish audience, like adults. Um, but really, a lot of this um, use of visual rhetoric and the production of meaning to audiences through visual means actually starts when we're really young. And the result of this um, in a lot of theoretical frameworks is that it imbues us with ideas about the world, about our culture, about society, and the way that things are supposed to be. I want you to take a moment and we're gonna do an activity. It's gonna be um, preferred that you have a pen and pencil in hand or you can have a Word document open. Um, I want you to take a moment and think about when you were a child and when you went into either an actual toy store or when you went into maybe the toy section of a big box store. And I want you to consider for a moment, pause the video in just a moment, um, and write down the kinds of things that you saw in the boy section. It could be the kinds of toys, the colors you saw, the textures, um, etc. Okay. And then I also want you to do the same with the girls section. So pause the video here and write down what are the things that you think about in each of those spaces. Okay. So we're coming back now. And often what we hear in, in class when I've done this experiment in the past is you'll hear things like on the girl's side, glitter, pink, purple, princess items, makeup, plastic heels, um, dolls, easy bake ovens, cleaning supplies like mini brooms, mini vacuums, um, dress up clothes that are very princessy and pretty and mermaids and these sort of more um, ethereal or supernatural kinds of beings. On the boys side of things, action figures, blue, red, harder toys like on the girl side a lot of times i'll hear like plushies or stuffed animals as well um again going back to the boys violent action figures guns uh tools um if there are dress up they're usually career oriented so like a police uniform a fireman um, a construction worker maybe some superheroes but and then generally they're usually superheroes in general sort of comes up. Building toys, so like connects or Legos, uh, Lincoln Logs, um, etc. There are clearly some separation in terms of like the kind of color one sees or doesn't see depending on where or which gendered section of a, to of a toy section or store um, they're in. And so there's this very clear gender division just like sort of in toys in general. Now this isn't to say that there aren't like boys that cross over and get girls things or girls that cross over and get boys things. But the way that they're advertised and presented to children are very much in gender terms. And a lot of it is very visual in nature, right? Um, clearly if there wasn't the that sort of visual aspect to it, um, you know, there wouldn't be a clear boy section or a girl section, right? They could have just intermingle them. But instead, uh, we get like these very different kind of look for both the girls and the boys sections. And a lot of it is based around like the kinds of materials that are used for the toys, the kinds of toys that they are, the sorts of imaginative um, uh, role play sorts of toys or costumes and whatever are 
very different from girls to boys, right? And this isn't to mention like people who aren't hyper feminine or hyper masculine to begin with as kids, right? So there's like a weird, I mean, there are some unisex sort of toys, but there are way less of them than those that are separated out based on gender, right? Often what I'll have you do then, <laughs> when I usually do this in class, is I try and say like, what are some things that you notice about the kinds of toys that are available for boys versus what's available for girls? And my class often comes to a lot of the same kinds of conclusions in terms of what is seen in one aisle versus the other. Usually for girls, there's um, sort of a softness. It has a lot to do with um, sort of aesthetic, right? So girls who are playing dress up, like they have the little heels, makeup, um, the dress up stuff that they have is very like feminine, like like princess dresses and, and the like, right? Whereas boys, it's very much more it's much more outside the house career oriented, like like we said before, like police officer and fireman and whatever. There is an element to fantasy of fantasy sometimes in boys costuming, such as the superheroes, um, but uh, those often have the sort of male savior complex attached to them, right? Sort of that like men are supposed to save the day or be the provider, right? So that has that sort of essence to it. Whereas women are supposed to look pleasing right <laughs> with like their makeup and their princess dresses and whatever um there's also a, again like sort of the color aspect you know blues and reds and whatever and more muted sort of pastel -y, like um pink and purple and maybe maybe a light like a powdery blue maybe for girls or like you know so there's like lighter kind of color schemes right some that are to us now probably considered more feminine, right? There's often more of a home, homey vibe um, to girls' toys. Like I say, like the Easy Bake Oven and play kitchens and, you know, like the pan sets and the foods that you get. Um, there's also like little brooms and mops and little fake vacuum cleaners that, you know, might be bought in a girl's aisle. Um, again, there are some strides being made and stuff like this. Like you can probably cross purchase some of these nowadays or have, you know, a certain kind of toy available in two different color schemes. I'm thinking Legos, for example, right? Legos are far more often seen in a boys section of a toy store, right? So Legos, things that are like about building or um, spatial sorts of um strengths right so like how to build with legos how to build with lincoln logs how to use connects etc um so those toys are more um active in like the outside of home sphere right or will be useful in helping to develop skills that would be helpful outside of the home whereas girls toys are often um sort of more domestic oriented right in the home okay and a lot of this kind of harkens back to um, the idea from the 1950s of women and men being in different spheres. Um, you know, the home is the uh, feminine sphere or the women's sphere, right? They take care of the home and they um, help raise the children. They clean the house and um, if you're going to host, they're going to cook dinners and things like that. Whereas the men is the breadwinner. They work outside the home. But what this tells us, though, is that the way that we construct um, appropriateness for, of toys towards one gender or another um, often takes on this sort of symbolic... Um, resonance in which it sort of also dictates ideas about what it means to be a boy or what it means to be a girl and how play is sort of utilized to um, forward ideas about what would then be appropriate once that child gets older as a woman or older as a male. Um, and it's so binary, right? So although we might see some crossover, it's uh, rare. 
Um, although it's getting better, arguably, these days. <laughs> but I think there's also something important to be said here, too, about the way in which we view that slippage, too, right? Um, I've known people in the past that would be very upset if they saw their boy, for example, playing with dolls, right? There's usually an exception for action figures, but isn't it strange that action figures are basically dolls, but we can't just call them dolls, <laughs> right? Or we could, but we usually don't, right? But this often comes down to, well, boys shouldn't be playing with girls' toys. Well, why not? And, you know, there tends to be less backlash if a girl is playing with a boy's toy versus when a boy is playing with a girl's toy. It's very, and I'm not saying that all parents are like this, but if you are going to see backlash, it tends to be more harsh for boys going to girls than when girls go to more boy toys, right? Um, again, I'm air quoting all of this because, again, I... I mean, I'm sure that there are some that are very strict in their views about what is appropriate for a boy or a girl to play with um, or whatnot, but often I disagree with that for a variety of reasons. But the way that we see the world is often painted for us from a young age and so very much the way that we sort of are allowed or disallowed to play with certain items or the colors and the kinds of toys that we are exposed to often paint our view of the world and will um, or can um, have an impact on the way that we see um, society and culture and people of different genders, right? Um, and there's also like sort of the problematic part of this where everything's like so binary, right? There's like, um, and, and that messy middle where people try and cross is where people start to get like upset about it. Like, I think that in, in general, society is like getting better about, you know, being more tolerant about boys playing with girl toys or girls playing with boy toys and like whatever, right? But um, for a long time, and there are uh, many ways in which even despite the more tolerance for those slippages, um, there is often um, this division in stores, even now, based on girls' toys and boys' toys, right? But um, it's important to see how some of this sort of informs what happens later in life, right? So the next thing I want to do is work with some advertisements again. I'm going to show you a few clips of some um, toys um, from uh, like 80s, 90s um, that are related to more girls types of toys and then more boys sorts of toys. So I'm going to fit those in right here. Everything you want at the Bobby Shopping Boutique. Shopping Boutique is a whole store with 11 fashion pieces, a checkout counter, and a credit card for you. It holds 20 fashion pieces that you can mix and match. Bobby Shopping Boutique. Cool shoes. When you find the perfect outfit, buy it. You have $200. Pink is perfect. Another perfect outfit. Buy it. $150. I love shopping. You never run out of money. $200. Buy everything you want at the Bobby Shopping Boutique. Shopping Boutique set with 11 fashion pieces. You put it together. Dolls and fashion packs each. So I'm cool shopping. Barbie got the coolest shop at the mall. Shop, shop. Getting ready for my sale. The biggest sale of them all. Lots of great buys. Me too. Try this size. This purse is you. Listen. Bring it up. Credit approved. Cool. Cash for me. Cool shop and Barbie doll comes with talking register and everything here. Friend dolls and batteries not included. Pretty pretty princess will be crowned princess today. To find the answer, you must play. Every pretty princess has fashion boots to wear and a pretty princess crown to place upon her hair. I've got my necklace. Oh no, the black ring. You can't win with that. In your favorite color, collect a oh. pretty thing. Two earrings and a necklace, a bracelet and ring. Look at everything I need, except the crown. I win. So much fun to play, pretty, pretty princess. Let's play again.
okay. Decorate in. Wait till you see what I can make. M&M's cakes. They're so fun to do. M&M's colors and corn. Cool. M&M's for you. And stuff from home, too. My favorite candy is now a yummy cake. Because we're really cooking with Easy Bake. Easy Bake Oven and M&M's brand sets whole separately. Light bulb not included. Use stuff from home. Adult assembly required. An evil plan. The world is ours. Perfectly executed by a sinister Cobra team. Cobra Commander, Destro, Cobra Claws, Storm Shadow. They only forgot one thing. G.I. Joe, a real American hero. We didn't start this, but you can bet we'll finish it. G.I. Joe versus Cobra. Each sold separately. Vehicles come with one figure. The ice planet was in a deep freeze until a maniac touched down. Lego maniac! <laughs> Such a cool planet into such a cool one. Lego system, ice planet, and space police. Each set sold separately. Maniac not included. So what you're probably noticing is um, there's like this Barbie fashion boutique, right, um, that I showed you. And so again here, we're sort of seeing the pink or predisposition towards um, being enamored with or obsessed with the way one looks, right? They're shopping for clothing that looks good on them and things like that. The other thing about this is it's teach women, teaching women to spend money on their appearance, right? In some ways this toy is because, um, it shows you that you can just, you know, just shop, right? Just put it on your card, buy what you want, right? Which is maybe not the best thing to tell people to do. Mm. Mm. Maybe people have money, but there are a lot of people that don't have that much money. <laughs> For the boys, there's more attention to sort of the active features of um, the toy. For example, um, the connects ones or things like that it's more activity based for the boys and they learn how to put things together and how you know in some ways because of the way that works they're kind of working with um sort of construction or um almost uh pre 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 <laughs> pre architectural sort of design sorts of things right getting them ready for like outside careers and the same is sort of true of like gi joe right it's sort of teaching kids about you know like masculinity as this like rough and tough and you know whatever like and then you kind of compare that to some of the other things in the girls commercial right where it's like we're airy and bubbly and oh my god right let's shop you know and of course that's an less visual but it sort of fits with some of the visual displays that we're getting right this like pink and airy and light and you know fun and shopping and you know predisposition uh, for like caring way too much about the way you look, right? Um, and so the boys is less about the way you look and the way more about the way you act and the way you are using activity and play to your um, benefit maybe to where you get older, like, you know? So the other thing here, um, I'm gonna show you one more commercial and it's a Barbie commercial from a few years ago um, that centers dads. So I'm gonna show that to you right here. I don't Typical man's man. Sometimes I go to the track with my buddies and we ride dirt bikes. I grew up with four brothers. We did mostly boy things. Sundays are always football. And now that gets interrupted with a little uh, Barbie time. I'm here to see the doctor. She'll see you in a minute. Okay, I'll wait here. Love playing Barbie, but I only play with Ken. Ken only. Help, there's a fire in my building! <laughs> Amanda, what qualities do you need to be an astronaut? Well, you need good eyesight, 50-50 eyesight. Now I want you to put your hands like this and hum. Hey, Ken, can you hum? Yeah, it's like this. 
doctor ready yet? Not yet. I think she could be anything she wants to be or all of them. What is 30 plus one? Oh, oh. Yes. Um, 31? Okay, woohoo! You would do anything, anything to make her happy. I'm feeling a little sick. I have a sore throat and a cough. I might have Let a fever. Let check your heart. Oh my, you are truly sick. Well, what should I do? Take a bunny. So now that you've watched that commercial, we can see um, sort of based on a comparison to some of those older Barbie commercials that I showed you, there is some um, attempt to relieve some stigma here about men playing with dolls or Barbie dolls specifically, right? But I would argue even as much as this makes sort of progress in the appropriateness of men playing with Barbies, it seems conditional in some ways, right? So. For example, it's fine because they have daughters, right? It's because they are fathers to girls that makes it okay. There's also some additional emphasis in this uh, commercial, which I think is uh, good, right? It talks a little bit more about how, you know, there are Barbies that sort of show girls that they can, you know, sort of the essence is that they can do anything, anything, right? But even so, some of the career paths and stuff like that, that the girls put these Barbies in, in situations are, um, some of them are more feminine, you know, in their alignment, I guess you could say. Um, but again, I think there's progress being made, you know, like even like the, um, you know, toys for around, you know, cleaning up around the house and vacuums and things like that. They're coming in more and boys colors and girls colors now. So boys can also clean now that they're red, their vacuum is red, right? <laughs> Whatever. Um, but the way that these sorts of advertisements um, sort of imbue ideology within us um, starts very early. And it has an impact on the way that we as humans see and interact and think about the world. Um, so it's sort of important to understand that the way that we're being sold things or the way that visuals around the world, not just in advertising, but just sort of broad spectrum, sort of impacts, um, our ideas and our ideology. So I want you to kind of keep that in mind moving forward. So this paper that we're working on right now in class is about stereotypes, right? And how the, they are very much visually constructed oftentimes um, and how those visuals can mean or imply certain things to those who are using or basing something off of a stereotype, right? Um, so there are visual facets to all of them, like I say, because usually stereotypes, you see someone and because they fit ver certain visual criteria, you might automatically get this idea that they are a certain way, right? So um, there are visual aspects to this, like I say, that sort of imbue or imply um, or symbolize certain other meanings to us, the viewer of those visual cues, right? So if I see a nerd with glasses, right? Oftentimes they're pictured with these big, big thick glasses, right? Because it's usually like sort of implied that they're reading all the time. And so their vision probably isn't the best as a result, which is not really accurate because there are people from all walks of life and different experiences that wear glasses, right? But it's often that we see nerds as wearing glasses, right? Um, oftentimes um, we might see a housewife in the kitchen, right? Um, in several of those ads from the video I posted last week about advertising and vi visual rhetoric, um, you know, you see the women in the kitchens either getting ready to serve Coke or, <laughs> um, or maybe with a service tray to serve Coke to people, right? So it kind of embodies this like sort of homemaker aesthetic uh, for women by seeing them in the kitchen or seeing them with service trays to, you know, deliver Coke to their families or whatever, or to whoever they're host, playing hostess to. Um, 
and this is true of like a lot of different um, stereotypes. I think it's important that moving forward, we kind of um, take heed of the way that things tend to be visually constructed and how the way that those things are visually constructed tend to um, be invoking some sort of meaning um, or ideological stance that it is imbuing within us, the viewer. So anyway, um, just a few thoughts to keep uh, in mind as you're working on your visual analysis paper. Um, and um, if you have any questions about this, I know this was, this was sort of a simplistic explanation, I realize, especially in the amount of time that I'm uh, putting into this. Uh, lecture in terms of, just in terms of you know I don't want to like overburden you with uh, lectures right now because life is a little hmm, it's a mad world you know um, but um, I hope this kind of gives some explanation about why visuals are important and the way that visuals both create meaning and imbue ideology within those who um, take in or look at or see those visual cues okay um, all right, so I think I'll leave it at that um, and hope you're all doing well. Please make sure you just let me know if you have any questions, okay? All right, bye. Let the hair for all the girls to buy princesses and all the boys to buy, to buy superheroes. Girls want superheroes and the boys want superheroes. The companies who make these try to trick the girls in into buying the pink stuff instead of stuff that boys want to buy, right? Yeah, so then why do all the girls have to buy princesses? Some girls like superheroes, some girls like princesses. Some boy like superheroes, some girl, some boy like princesses. Absolutely, so absolutely. Then, right. Why does all the girls have to buy pink stuff and all the boys have to buy different color stuff?